showing the retinal thickness. Um, it's kind of hard to see there, um, but I believe the top left one is from when he first had that VRB on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's for the OCT. It looks like here 2018, January, and looks like almost every month or two months. And as you can see, all the intraretinal fluid and uh, some maybe subretinal, but um, kind of got better over that time period till the place gets almost as normal there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, so this looks like 2019, so about a year after, and um, still looks like there is no fluid, no fluid, and then, um, yeah, up until here it's 2020. Mm -hmm. so two years later. In the next day visit, the patient, uh, patient's macular edema worsened despite um, a last in treatment and he developed a new patient. So, um, yeah, so the first one here looks pretty normal. The second one also looks pretty normal. And the third one looks like we start to see um, some irregularity of the retina, especially nasally. Um, or I'm not sure if that's intraretinal fluid, or but there's like a large bump there, and looks like it gets worse. And the next um scan kind of spreads more towards the nerve, and then looks like there you maybe get some like exudation, kind of gets smaller here, but maybe those are some exudates. Um, so here you have a our photo of the right eye. Um, so I guess on the day after that second lesion happened. So um, I mean, overall, it looks fairly normal here. Yeah. It's interesting that vein on top, the way it wraps. Yeah, that kind of cool. yeah this thing right here. Yeah, it kind of goes under and then over. Yeah, it's different. And here we have the, well, I guess the late phase, this later phase FA where we already had all the venous filling. Um, and then quite pretty good. Yeah. And we need the right eye and FA was very late, right? Um, and Okay. Mm -hmm. Here is the left eye, all for us, and um, here attention is drawn pretty much to this area superior fovea, superior nasal fovea. We have all this area of um, hypo autofluorescence that's like kind of stippled and, and this kind of dotty pattern. Uh, Kind of looks like it's coming off of this vessel here. And you have a large blob of hypofluorescence right there. Um, and then some more kind of lighter hypofluorescence in the superior um, macula. Um, so here's the FA. There's an early um, photo, just a choroid. And it's, you could say this is uh, blocking um, in those same areas. And then, I'm going to go through the middle again. Yep. So, looks like it shows the arterial phase. And so, you saw the arteries going up, and then these areas start to uh, kind of have some fluorescence. Um, keep going. Um, and coming off of the small vessels, like it kind of looks like a little pockets of the ones that kind of 
Oh, we're going to range it. Can you see where the blockage was for the main extension? Um, so somewhere here. Probably where which vessel is blocked? Probably, yeah, look at all the pathology. Well, you can sort of start in the middle of the occlusion and figure pretty well. So start kind of like the middle and go up. Or something here. I can subvert you. Okay. So then this is that's all phalangitatic. So this is a vein here, right? Yeah. And this is an artery, I'm pretty sure. So I think it's right there. Okay. That's where you're crossing. Uh -huh. Okay. And then yeah, so this is the late phase uh, at the end now, and um, you still have those areas where you have the blocking defects, uh, and then kind of area of hypofluorescence within that, uh, or yeah, hyperfluorescence uh, within that area where there's a blockage. Even the next, this is good to know about. This. Most people, I, I, we, were, we were talking the other day. One of the other yeah. oh. partners, like, it's that, like, it's not a So, this is a good one. Yeah, so this is even later. Um, yeah. uh, then we have your uh, horizontal OCP, the left eye. Um, and it looks pretty regular all the layers to the hair and the contours too. So, yeah, you get as you move up and to where the VRVO was, you start to see kind of loss of the retinal architecture, especially in the outer layer. Or the inner layer, and then yeah, these exudates and some fluid along that. Yeah, what about right the outer layer? You have this area. I don't know if it's shadowing though from this kind of. Yeah, it's a it's a thing like a vessel or something with the blood. Yeah, dilated vessel. Yeah, and it's causing a shadow, covering up this outer uh, retinal area. Then you have more exudation over here and then more deep on the also architecture. The eye or the look of eye, and you can see areas of increased uh, reflectance and the areas where the little dots were, and then uh, decreased reflectance um, right here. So um, the vaccination was given on October 20th. The different treatment was considered. What is the reason of this body um, in the current regime? So I think I have a shorter summary of funding. Do you want to just summarize real quick? Yeah, so we had initially uh, VRBO um, that had associated macular edema that improved um, with AVAST and, and then had a recurrence of uh, macular edema, kind of. So similarly similar, um, instead of making like a large prognosis that there is no invasive environment that we saw, it's clearly intra-retinal exudation would be one of the blockage conditions in the whole lot of things that we saw uh, lately as well. Um, any idea? Um, just like you know, vascularization. Yeah, it's that white spot on the floor, so you don't like go back to the FA. You go back to the FA. You don't see these much, but it's good to recognize them. That thing. So if that were neovascularization, it would increase in uh, or increase in fluorescence over time. Yeah. So that's how you know it's not. Um, I guess it's like it's like a follow up or or, or maybe. A random 
Yeah, yeah, call it. What's the two words you use? A ram or polyp? It's like a polyp. It's like a not. It's an am, but it's not necessarily a ram. No, it's a it's a. Mm, it's uh, a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a, if you look at the FA, it's it's not in the arterial side. It's in the um, it's on the venous side. If you look at the very early ones. So go ahead, it's the green. It's not common. People don't talk about it. Actually, one of my partners didn't know it existed, so it's not like you have to know it. But um, but if you recognize them, the, the treatment's much different for these, and it works really well. I didn't laser it, right? Yeah, so it's a venous, it's a venous macrame. Um, so we should have the venous macrame and then laser, and then we're trying to do um, what's known as. Uh, Dr. Cohen provided of the setting, so it's a 200 to 500 micron plot size, and then they run a lot to the milliseconds um, uh, interval and and then 30 shots. So maybe that shows here. Yeah, go kind of big, low energy, kind of a little longer duration. If you're, if you're hitting any aneurysm, you kind of want a big, uh, for me, so people do a million different things, but what I like is like, 500-ish, 200 to 500, like long and low power. You just want to kind of fake it. Mm -hmm. And these things, the, the venous macro, and what, so what it is, are you talking about what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so, you have a, <laughs> um, so just uh, as an overview, retinal macro aneurysm, they're localized dilatations of the walls of the blood vessel. Um, usually about 100 to 250 microns in diameter. Macro aneurysms occur in the renal cycles, but then the cocaine is a classification, and they're classified into four types arterial, capillary, lateral associated, and venous. Um, they're also further classified as hemorrhagic or exudative, and they're one of the very few causes of multilayer hemorrhages. Um, it can also occur with, or can occur with systemic um, diseases like hypertension, which is the most common, and then also ocular diseases like PRPO. Um, FA typically shows pooling or filling in middle to late phase for scapular or early phase for piciformis, which are spindle shaped aneurysms. And then another cool um, imaging modality to use is OCTA because it may show flow. And if it's from those, um, then it won't show flow. Um, specifically, venous macro aneurysms are very rare, typically originate from a capillary bed. Most are secondary. Um, in the literature, it says usually co-systemic BRVO in patients with hypertension, but it's also been noted in Crick's disease. Um, and then they can also be isolated with very few cases of this, of this where patients have like no ocular or systemic history. Um, but again, the condition is actually very rare. So I had a really hard time finding a lot of info of our students. <laughs> it's good to know about it. Um, for management, you'll want to obtain workup for hypertension and systemic vascular disease in these patients. Um, most, uh, and these are macronesthetics in general, but most resolve spontaneously in fibrose and can be dosed systemically. But if there's chronic leakage or rupture um, affecting the macula, can treat with laser. Um, with two to three rows of large spot size, what I read, 200 to 500 microns, immediately adjacent to the macula and right I treat right over. And then um, anti-diabetic injections have also been successfully used, but they may not label. Have you had any success, Dr. Cohen, with anti-diabetic? Well, that's what this one was kind of resistant. I don't see why anti-diabetic would work. You can use anti-diabetic for everything, and they work kind of, but but they don't work well. Like on these, if people use them for, uh, I think central, central service actually makes a little bit of sense. People use them for retinal arterial macroaneurysms, and I I think it's because the vessels around the aneurysm maybe, but it went, it went I think help leakage from the actual aneurysm. So this might have been more of a class. So the story this one has, and I've, I've, I honestly probably had three or four or five of these, but they do so well. So it typically is the vein occlusion, you know, a couple of years later, you treat them, they're doing well, and then all of a sudden later they get one of these aneurysms. I think these are probably on collaterals. I never, I never saw the differentiation, but I think it's probably a venous collateral macro aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people it's sort of like if you US, you know, if you take everybody off of you know 275 and put them on a side road, you know, a couple of years later that side road is going to get kind of worn out. So I think what it is is the venous collaterals just kind of they get worn out with the flow and they they bulge up and turn into these aneurysms. And they do so well with laser. Mm -hmm. 
you know, a couple spots and boom, they're gone. And this one wasn't so much central, but there was a lot of exudate with it. So I just thought I should treat it. And then they don't need any anti veg because anti veg really doesn't work. A lot of these things you can do, like I've, I've been treating a couple more people with PDT too. If there's extra foveal nets and they just, you know, more polyphenol and they're not responding, anti veg works, but it's such a long term commitment. Sometimes you can do other things. And, you know, diabetics with non central edema, you know, it's little patches resistant, you just laser it. But these do, these are like one of the best things to laser. It's a really nice laser. There was a cool one in literature I saw that the case, like after um, it was a really healthy patient who developed viral pericarditis and then um, developed like a venous macroaneurysm afterwards. So they thought that it was from like increased pulmonary pressure. Oh, maybe. Yeah. 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 Let me talk real quick. We're actually done, right? 